Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 798. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 7, 797 to 800, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we want to see how to take a database with name, first names, last names, phone numbers, and information, and search. So if I type in MA, I want to show all the MAs. If I type MAN, I want to show all the MANs. Now this is sort of like find, right? And there's other ways we could do this. We could do this with filter and other ways, but this will be a formula method. All right. Now, in last video, 797, we saw how to use the aggregate function, a new function in Excel 2010, and the index. So we're going to use what we learned back in that video here, but we're going to have to figure out how to do an approximate match. So MAN, it needs to find all of the uh, text in the last name column that has MAN. All right, I'm going to go over here. First thing, Let's uh, we'll start with M A N. First thing is we want to count how many text items in this column right here have M A N. Well, you know we can use the search function. The search function is great. It takes a text string like M A N and looks through a single text string and says what position it finds M A N. So here it would find M A N as the first position. All right. So find text this right here. Comma. Now, normally, we select one cell. So if I say uh, this one right here, MAN, it's going to say it's in the first position. Now, that was cell this one. If I were to type MAN, so right now, it should say 4 as the result. So that's what search is programmed to do. I'm going to undo Control Z. All right. So that's what it's programmed to do when it has a single cell. But we're going to force the issue and put a range of cells in here. So I'm going to highlight this whole range right here. Uh, and now we are forcing search to become an array. So if I highlight this, it'll return a single number for each one of the items here. So F9, F9 is pause on my uh, video recorder. So I'm going to have to go up to formulas and uh, calculate right here. All right, so you could see 111, it finds all the ones at the end. Value error is for all the other ones because it can't find that there. I'm going to control Z. All right, now what we can do is wrap this and put is number. Notice the search right now is returning an array. Is number can look through this now, and it will just say true or false. So it'll give us a, a string of falses and trues. Not F9, I have to click that right there. All right, so we have all these trues here, Control Z. Now, for counting, we can convert trues and falses to ones and zeros with a double negative, and then we can put all of that in some product. Some part of it will add all the ones. The sum product part of it, since it can handle arrays, you can see the screen tip is named Array1. We don't have to use Control Shift Enter, we just hit Enter. So now if I type M A N N. You see there's three, I think, down here. All right, now we're actually going to use the same construction down here in our array formula, so I'm going to actually steal it. I'm going to hit F4 right there, F4 because I want it locked, and F4 right there. In essence, we're going to use this part right here. I'm going to copy. That'll give us, if I hit F9, forgot F9 is pause. That little part there will just give us uh, the ones and zeros. Oops, I highlighted a negative sign there. You can see the negative ones. Control Z. So I just want from there to there, just so I don't have to type it again. All right, now, what are we going to need? Right now, MAN, they are in the last couple of rows, so we're going to need whatever row this number is in our array. That's one all the way down to uh, 18, so this will probably be uh, 15, 16, 17. So somehow we're going to need our lookup function index to look and find the record in rows uh, 15, 16, and 17. All right, I'm going to start inside the formula. Instead of switching straight to the index, I'm going to do the hard part. Uh, we need the row number, and I'm going to use the small function, but as we saw in 797 video, there's a new function called aggregate. And it's great because it'll allow us 
to uh, use the small function inside the aggregate, we are not required to do control shift enter. And this aggregate function has the ability to ignore errors. Remember those value errors we saw up here? We need to ignore those. So I'm going to say ignore error values. So it's 15 for small, 6 for ignore errors. And now the array part of it. We, in essence, need the whole array of ray numbers, um, row numbers here where there's a match. So we're going to build it here. And then the 15 is small. We'll be able to extract row the appropriate rows as we copy our formula down. All right. This array, just like the last video, we need all the rows. So I'm going to highlight this range right there and hit F4. Now that'll give me row 2, 3, and I don't want that. So I'm going to subtract row of this one, F4. Now that'll give me, since I'm subtracting row 2 from 2, it'll give me 0 to whatever, and I don't want that. So I have to add one more back in. All right, so that's the top part, as we saw in our last video. Those are the actual numbers that are going to be returned. Now, right now, what would it do? It would return all the row numbers, and we don't want that. We only want some of them. So if I hit my F9, we don't want all of them. Control Z. So we're going to tell all those row numbers we only want some of them. So I'm going to divide by, and then, then open parentheses, Control V. Remember, this has trues and falses. I actually do not need to put that inside of parentheses. These are trues and falses. And you may have trues and falses, and you do some operation like divisional, convert them to ones and zeros. And guess what? When we highlight this whole thing here, what are we going to get? I hit F9 again. Uh, we're going to get a bunch of divide by uh, zero errors. Actually, the value errors are are not what we're going to have trouble with. It's to divide by zeros. And there's our row numbers, 15, 16, 70. All this aggregate, in essence, is going to do is going to allow us to use the small to extract the 15 in this row, the 16 when we get down to the next one, and the 17 when we get down to the next one. Control Z. All right, so the final little lovely part of aggregate is k. That means small. Which number do you want? The first smallest, the second smallest, et cetera? I'm going to do rows. It's a number incrementer, because I need to have the uh, 1, 2, 3 as I copy it down. So I'm sitting in F5. So I'm going to do F dollar sign 5 colon F5, close parentheses. All right, so that's the K, close parentheses. Let's just see how this works. I'm going to enter this, Control Enter, copy it down and over. This is just the row number. So now we're, we haven't done a lookup function yet, but we can see clearly that for this whole row, when we need to extract these four elements from our data set, it'll have the row number. Now we simply put this. Remember, this whole thing is just giving us a row number into index. Now the array, remember, escape. We need first name, last name, phone number, uh, more information there. We need to extract elements from each one of these columns. So I'm going to highlight not the first column, but I need the first, not the second one, which I just had that small reduced down in size so we could see on the video. We actually need this first column. So Control Shift Down Arrow F4. Now I don't want to F just F4 here. This would be mean as I copied over this way, I would have the same first column. So I'm going to hit F4 again. That's why it's locked with the row reference only. So as I copy down, it's got the first name column, but when I move to the side, the A's will move to B's. All right, comma. So index, that is the array. This whole big aggregate is the row number. I simply say close parentheses. Now I don't, even though we have a big array in here, aggregate allows us to use that array without control shift enter. So I enter it and I'm going to copy it down. I mean over and then down. Okay, so the last little bit is simply we need to turn off the formula because we don't want these num errors to show we have a 3 here. We simply are going to build a formula that shuts this formula off or shows a blank when it get pa gets past the third record. Easy enough. If, and I'm going to steal this little rows, if our number incrementer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is greater than this, F4, then what do I want? The value if true, double quote for blank, comma, the value if false, our lovely uh, index aggregate function. Control Enter. No Control Shift Enter here. 
double click and send it down. Now I can test this out. J O J O O right so I, I, there it is J O so that's an approximate uh, lookup in essence it's uh, sometimes called a fuzzy fuzzy match right but we're extracting records so we used uh, index aggregate a bunch of other functions also all right we'll see you next video